The definition of a mathematical expression is a programming statement that has a value. This is a really broad definition. Many, many programming statements have a value. In the next three videos, we are going to focus specifically on the mathematical expressions that produce algebraic formulas. To do that, we need to understand that there's a difference between the algebraic formulas that we've seen in textbooks and on the internet and how these expressions look in code. So we're going to talk about several steps of how to convert algebra to code. The very first step is to use meaningful variable names. In algebra, variables are represented by single characters. as x, y, h, b, c, r, etc. These variable names are not very meaningful and are often used for a variety of values. In programming, we often write programs that have many, many lines and have significant complexity. One of the ways that we simplify the complexity to make our programs more manageable and of higher quality is to use meaningful variable names. This is an important skill, one that you'll want to learn, work on so that you become really good at creating meaningful variable names in your code. Today we're going to look at some formulas that deal with circles. Notice how there is an R in these formulas, and that R represents radius. Well, our first step to converting these formulas to code is to give that a very a meaningful variable name. So here if I go to code, I'm going to need a variable, and radius could have decimal portions to it, so I'm going to have it be of type double, but I'm going to give it a meaningful name. This is pretty straightforward. I simply have to name it radius. And then I have a formula that ha then I have a variable with a meaningful name. The first formula we want to do is diameter. And we're going to do this um, based on the radius, and so if you notice that the diameter is two times the radius, they don't give you the formula here, but it's 2r, the radi the diameter. So first we're going to need a variable that we can hold the diameter, and then we can compute it. So I have diameter equals, and now what we're going to need to do is talk about the second rule for converting, and the second rule is that you must use the multiplication operator. When we look at these algebraic formulas, we see 2 bumped right up against pi, bumped right up against r, and we know when we look at that, that means 2 times pi times r. And that works in algebra just to bump them up next to each other with no multiplication operator. In code, that's not the case. So when I want to do 2r, I have to do 2, I've, and I must put that multiplication operator. So 2 times radius would look like that. So here I have used meaningful variable names, diameter and radius, and I have used the multiplication operator. Now I can print that out. Remember when we print something out, we put an output label. The diameter is... Now, here I'm doing a formula, and <clears throat> it's based on the value of radius. What is the current value of radius? Well, we haven't really given it a value, so before we can do this kind of a formula, we need to make sure and get that value. If we're going to get that value from a user, remember that we do an input prompt, enter the radius, and then we use a CN statement to get that. All right, let's go ahead and run our program and see if we can compute the diameter. It's building, and here with the radius, I enter 1.2, and it tells me the diameter is 2 by 2.4, which is exactly what we expect. Let's go ahead and do a couple more of these formulas. The next one is the circumference. The hardest part about this 
formula is the word circumference. Notice that I've already got it here in my column. So I'm going to just copy this and only have to spell it once. I want a meaningful a variable with a meaningful name. So I'm going to call it circumference. I'm going to want to compute that. So I'm going to say the circumference is equal, and this is 2 times pi, and now I'm stuck. So notice in the formula it uses the Greek letter for pi, which I don't have on my keyboard. So I can't use that. So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable. And I'm going to give it the name pi using regular letters I can find on my keyboard. And I know the value of that of pi is 3.14159 plus some other digits. This is enough precision for what we want to do today. So now I can use it 2 times pi times radius. And there I have converted this formula, 2 pi r, this algebra formula, to code, 2 times pi times radius. And now I can print out the result of that. Oops, you have to spell it right. And let's go ahead and run that and see what we get. And there we have, we enter the radius, 1.2, the diameter is 2.4, and the circumference is 7.53982. All right, let's do one more before we're done following these two rules. Use meaningful variable names, and you have to include, always include multiplication operator. Here's the last formula we're going to do today, and that is the area of a circle, which is pi r squared. All right, this works a bit of a problem. Um, we don't have a way to superscript that 2 to express um, exponents. And in fact, there's no exponent operator in C++. So we need to figure out another way to do r squared. And so let's just remember our basic algebra, knowing that r squared is simply r times r. And we know how to do multiplication, so now we can do the area. All right, to do this, I'm going to want to use a variable with a meaningful name, so area. Now I'm going to compute area, which equals pi times, and remember we're going to do radius squared. We're going to do it as radius times radius. And now I have converted this formula, pi r squared, this algebraic formula, to code. Pi times radius times radius. Let's print it out. Use a label to say what it is. The area of the circle is. And we can run our program. And we can put in 1.2 for our radius. It tells us the diameter, the circumference, and the area of the circle. The nice part about this program is I can run it over and over again with different values for the radius. And the program will give me the values related specifically to that radius. Look at that. When the radius is 1, I get pi back. And there's the nice part about the program. I simply run it once and I can, I simply write it once and I can run it over and over again. Those are the two beginning steps to converting algebra to code. We will have two more videos that cover the other rules for converting algebra to code.